Time for business and traders are warning of challenging times for them next year. Firm measures are not taken to stabilize the city. The local currency is currently trading at four cities, 99 pesos. There are even reports that some forex bureaus are already selling uh, the dollar for five cities, two pesos. We're hearing from the Ghana Union of Traders Association, Guta, on the marketplace. Joining me from the Joy Business Newsroom is host of the marketplace, Emmanuel Abwajiri. So what is good to say, Emmanuel? All right, thank you very much, Daryl. Indeed, uh, traders are worried. It's 13 days to the end of the year, and it looks like there's no end in sight towards the uh, CD depreciation. And the traders are actually sounding a note of caution, or they are warning uh, the public or government, so to speak, that they will be compelled to transfer prices, uh, to increase prices, because um, they, they wouldn't have any other option that to increase prices next year if the trend doesn't change. So we'll, we'll, we'll be listening to or we'll be watching the president of Guta, Dr. Joseph Oping, telling us what exactly they expect government to do with regards to the city dollar uh, parity uh, situation. And as, as one of the measures, they're actually calling on government to peg the dollar to the city for importers so that it will not destabilize the capital so much. Aside from that, we'll also be looking at the Unipar situation. We'll be engaging some port stakeholders on the replacement of GCNet system by Unipass that the South Korean technology come next, uh, early next year. So that's it uh, for the marketplace. There'll be other stories as well, Daryl. All right, thanks very much, Emmanuel Abwajiri Afi. We will be watching. Turning to other news now, Indian Bank of Baroda has become the first financial institution to be hit by the new capital requirement of the Bank of Ghana. It follows decision by the Indian Bank to voluntarily shut down its operations in Ghana, but it appears this was not just influenced by the new capital requirement of the central bank. Sources say the move is to review the operations in Ghana by shutting down its business. It is also part of a global strategy to actually review operations in some other markets. Earlier this year, it also announced that it was closing down its operations in South Africa, as well as Trinidad and Tobago. In June, the Bank of Baroda closed down its Bahrain and Nassau branches and is currently in the process of closing its Bahamas branch. In its Ghana business, the bank also decided not to increase its stated capital to 400 million cities because it was considering its line of business and realized it would not be prudent to hold such huge capital on its books because of its line of business in the country. The bank was very strong in financing the Indian community in Ghana in terms of industries and hospitality. The bank was very strong in financing the Indian community in Ghana in terms of industries and the hospitality sector. Even though it has announced its decision, the move has to be approved by the Bank of Ghana before it can finalize the process of moving out of this country. Meanwhile, the Bank of Baroda is working to sell its Ghana assets for almost 200 million cities. According to Graphic Business, Cow Bank and Sahel Sahara Bank are in the race to take these assets. If the numbers are right, then it looks like the remaining eight banks yet to meet the capital requirement has reduced to seven. So the countdown is on with six working days more for the banks to meet the new levels. And Fidelity Bank has held a special appreciation dinner in honor of his former MD, Jim Baden. Bismarck Ausa attended the ceremony for Joy Business and reports. Jim Baden was the co-founder of Fidelity Bank with responsibilities from Treasury and Wholesale Banking, among others. Prior to that, Jim served as Executive Director of Fidelity Discount House from 2002 after serving as the General Manager since the company's inception. He has had an illustrious 20-year career as a leading Treasury Manager and investment banker in the Ghanaian money market. One of Mr. Baden's remarkable achievements prior to leaving the bank was his contribution in helping the bank meet the minimum capital requirement set by the Bank of Ghana. Board Chairman of Fidelity Bank, Edward Efa, also had this to say. Everything you've heard about Jim is very true. Um, when I think of Jim, I think of a number of things. Uh, many of them were in the play, many of them were subsequently said. Um, but Jim is God-fearing, and his um, fear for God has infected me. <laughs> Over the years, so I remember the first, when we um, opened the Fidelity House and we, we sort of cleaned it up and all that, it was Jim's idea that, Edward, let's dedicate this to God. 
In his address at the event, Mr. Baden urged directors of the bank to adhere to good corporate governance to make strides in the financial markets. Companies don't feel anyhow or accidentally. They fail because of failure of leadership. For instance, I, do you respect good corporate governance? You have a credit manual that has been approved by the board. You have credit guidelines. Do you conform to the policies and guidelines or do you cut corners? We have prudential requirements and ratios that we submit to Bank of Ghana on a weekly basis. Do you doctor your figures and create the impression that you are doing well when behind the scenes it's all rot? Meanwhile, new managing director of Fidelity Bank, Julian Opuni, has pledged commitment to continue the good work Jim started. Bismarck will say support for Joy Business. And on that musical note, we end business for this afternoon. Coming up next is Paul's. Moreno has lost his job and the reaction is coming in. Stay with us.